The Laplace approximation is one approach to this, uh, to approximating this posterior distribution. What the Laplace approximation does is it takes the posterior and it says that since we can't calculate this analytically, we can't say what this is exactly, we'll approximate it with a uh, multivariate Gaussian distribution and that distribution is going to have a mean and a covariance and now the question is how do we set the mean and the covariance? We want to set these two parameters such that this distribution is approximately equal to this distribution. Actually making this type of an approximation um, alone does not actually define what the Laplace approximation is. Um, the Laplace approximation is uh, where we make this uh, we make this Gaussian approximation to the posterior and then we have a specific way for finding these two parameters and so let's see how how we would do that. Okay so let's motivate um, let's kind of rewrite the problem uh, in a way that will make it easier to see what the Laplace approximation is doing. So notice from Bayes rule that we have the posterior is equal to the joint likelihood divided by the marginal over the model variable. And so what we've done is we've, uh, we've become clever and written this joint likelihood of y and w. Remember from the rules of probability, this is also equal to the likelihood of y times the prior of w. I've written it now where both terms are on the left side of the conditioning bar, just to have less to write. And let's do the simple transformation of taking the log of that joint likelihood and then exponentiating it. And so, of course, these two things cancel each other out and we're left with the, log, uh, with the likelihood again. However, what we're going to do now is, using this representation, we're going to approximate the log of the joint likelihood. So we're going to replace this log joint likelihood in the numerator and the denominator with an approximation of it. So again, there are many approximations that we could use. Since we're right now interested in discussing the Laplace approximation, that, that means that we're going to use a second order Taylor approximation. So what we're going to do is define this log joint likelihood. Remember, it's a function of the data and also the unknown model variable. The model variable is the only free parameter that we get to change. Obviously, we can't change the data. So let's redefine this uh, log joint likelihood as f. And because w is the free parameter, we'll, we'll keep w and suppress y and x. So f of w is the log of the joint likelihood, which is a function of w. And now let's replace this function f with a second order Taylor expansion of the, that function. Okay, so a second order Taylor expansion of a function f of a vector w uh, in order to define this uh, second order Taylor expansion, we need to define one more vector z that's in the same space as the vector w. So in our case, uh, w is in rd plus 1, and so z is going to also be in uh, rd plus 1. And so then we do a second order Taylor expansion about the point z, which means that we say that f of w, so remember this is a function of a free vector w. We can change w, can take any value in the space uh, rd plus 1, is approximately equal to f of z, where now z is fixed. We've defined one specific point z, and that's never going to change. And so we have this, uh, the function evaluated at that specific point z, plus this first order term, which is the difference between between w and z. So w is free to change, z is fixed. So this is uh, the difference between w and z times the first uh, order derivative of f of z. So this is a vector. So this is the, the gradient of, of f evaluated at z plus a second order term which is one half times the difference between w and z times the, the matrix of second derivatives. So this is uh, the second derivative of the function f evaluated at z times the same uh, difference between w and z. So this is, again, on the right-hand side, an approximation of the left-hand side. 
They're both functions of w, uh, but the difference is that the right-hand side also takes a particular point z that we have to pick. What the Laplace approximation does is it picks z to be the map solution. So we find the map solution of the, the, the regularized logistic regression problem using gradient methods. And then we define z to be that map solution. We expand, uh, we do a second order Taylor expansion of the log of the joint likelihood about its map solution. So if we now use this approximation and we plug it back into what we've been working with, recall that uh, the function f is the log of the joint likelihood. We're defining z to be the map solution. Then using Bayes' rule, we simply have that the posterior of w is equal to e to uh, the exponential of f of w divided by that uh, integral of that numerator over w. We then replace the original function f of w with its second order Taylor expansion. Uh, so we've, we've got an inequality here. We now do a second order Taylor expansion of this, uh, what's in the exponent. And so that turns this uh, into an approximation. But again, we've taken the function of w up here and simply replaced it with this function of w down here. And now we can simplify uh, this term in two uh, ways. First, notice that uh, this, this term here, which is a function of a fixed point that we pick, in this case, w map. So this term here appears in both the numerator and the denominator. And it doesn't involve w at all. It involves no free, free variables. So we can simply represent this numerator as a product of this and the exponential of this, as well as in the denominator. And, th and therefore, these two terms will cancel. So these terms cancel each other out in the numerator and the denominator. Also, remember that uh, we've def defined z to be the map solution. So there was a very specific reason for this, that we picked uh, the second order Taylor, Taylor expansion to be expanded about the map solution. And that's because the gradient of the log of the joint likelihood at the map solution is equal to 0. So imagine that the log of the joint likelihood looks like this. We find the map solution, which is this point right here. So this is the map solution right here. Then the gradient, by definition of the map solution, which is the maximum, is equal to 0. So the gradient of this function at the map solution equals 0. So by definition of how we pick z here, this term and this term cancel. So we can cancel these two terms out because they, they both appear in the numerator and the denominator. They cancel each other out by division. This term is a function of w, so we can't can cancel each other out because uh, they're both functions of w. However, th this gradient term is equal to 0. Therefore, whatever this difference is, we have a vector, uh, we have 0 as a solution to this dot product. Therefore, we're left with uh, one more term in both the numerator and the denominator, which is this. So now I've gone back to, I've replaced z and f with what they actually are in this case we have that the Laplace approximation approximates the posterior of w in this way, where I've done one more thing. I've brought out a negative here and then put in a negative there, so these two negatives cancel. However, writing it this way makes the distribution stand out very clearly. We can see that this is a multivariate Gaussian distribution we can just, by inspection, we can see that it's a multivariate Gaussian distribution, that the mean of it is equal to the map solution, and the covariance is equal to the inverse of whatever this matrix is. So again, we approximate the posterior of W to be a Gaussian with a mean and a covariance. The mean is equal to the map solution, and now the covariance is equal to this, which, uh, which has a name. This is equal to, this, this uh, matrix is equal to the Hessian. And so this is the negative uh, inverse of the Hessian. 
So therefore, for our specific model, we have to actually calculate this. If we wrote out the log of the joint likelihood and took the second derivative of it with respect to w and then evaluated that second derivative at the map solution, we would find that it's equal to this term here. So again, notice that these are all things that we have. We have the data x and y. We've solved the map solution. Therefore, there's no more unknowns. We simply evaluate this matrix, take its negative and its inverse, and define the covariance of the Gaussian to be equal to sigma. So this slide summarizes, uh, summarizes the Laplace approximation for doing Bayesian logistic regression. We have labeled data pairs, x and y. We've defined the likelihood of y given x and uh, coefficient vector w, a regression coefficient vector w, to be the sigmoid function, which is equal to this term here. We've defined a multivariate Gaussian prior on the vector w, like this. If we then want to approximate the posterior distribution on w, we can run an algorithm, an iterative algorithm, to find the map solution of this uh, problem, which is the argmax of the log of the joint likelihood here. We then define the posterior uh, mean to be that map solution. And now we want to expand uncertainty around that map solution in the covariance of the Gaussian. So we then calculate this uh, function of our log joint likelihood, take its matrix of second derivatives, evaluate at the map solution, and then invert it, take the negative, and define that to be the covariance. And so what we can see is that with the PLOS approximation, we're essentially doing map, except now uh, to the map solution, we attach also a covariance uh, matrix that says how uh, certain are we in our map solution, and then defined the uh, distribution on, uh, on our unknown vector w to be a Gaussian, where the mean is map and the covariance is uh, the inverse of the negative Hessian.